Hello again, everybody. Uh, we trust you're all surviving well out there. Our sympathies go out to people who we know and love who have been bereaved and have lost loved ones. Our prayers are with them. But we're going to turn today for a little reading to the book of Romans, chapter 12. Very, very familiar words regarding the surrendered life, the consecrated life. It says in Romans 12, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, back there in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 22 and verse 30, God says, I sought for a man among them to stand in the gap, to make up the hedge, to stand me before the land that I should not destroy it, a man to stand in the gap. Now listen to this for a bit of exegesis here. Gap, G-A-P. Paul describes the will of God as being good, acceptable, and perfect. He's speaking here about the gap. I wonder today, are you standing in the gap? Are you standing in the center of God's will for your life? There's very little in this world that we could describe as being truly good, truly acceptable, and truly perfect. But the will of God for the life of a Christian is, are you in the center of God's will for your life? That's the best place to be. It's the safest place to be. And it's also the most profitable place to be because the Bible says we are to pray, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And one of the great thrills in the Christian life is finding the will of God, following the will of God, and then by God's grace, fulfilling the will of God. It's like the clay in the center of the potter's wheel. That's where the potter can work with it. As long as it's in the center, it's easily worked with. And if we're not in the center of God's will for our lives, then difficulties and trials and hardships often get the better of us. But if we know that we're in the place that God wants us to be, and we know that we're in the uh, very hollow of his hand, and the hand of the Lord is upon us, and we're seeking to be in the center of his will, and the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God, then we know that all things will work together for good. Just a few pointers as to how to know whether or not you're in the will of God from Romans chapter 12. You'll notice that Paul is speaking here to believers. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. He's speaking to people who are part of the family and fold of God, who have received of God's mercy, who have enjoyed God's forgiveness. So the first step in being in the center of God's good, acceptable, and perfect will is to know that your sins are forgiven, to know that you're born again, adopted into God's family. In other words, to know that you're saved. Are you saved today from the power of sin? from the pollution of sin, and from the penalty of sin. Acts 4.12 says we must be saved. And then the next step is we must be surrendered. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Surrendered. The surrendered life. I believe in the Lordship of Christ. Hudson Taylor said if he's not Lord of all, then he's not Lord at all. Is your life surrendered to him? Have you put your body in God's altar? Have you yielded all that you are and all that you have to him? Saved, surrendered, and then sanctified. Because the little text uses the word holy. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, H-O-L-Y, which just means set apart, sanctified, meet for the master's use. The Lord chooses people who are separated unto him. He chooses people who are sanctified. The Lord wants to set his people apart to be a, a peculiar people, a different people from the people of this world. Are you saved today? Are you surrendered? Are you seeking to pursue holiness and follow after holiness and grow in grace? And then something else, separated. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The Bible clearly teaches that the child of God is to be separated and distinct from this world. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. 
Don't let the world squeeze you into its mold. Be not conformed to this world. Saved, surrendered, sanctified, and separated. And you'll notice that Paul says this is your reasonable service. Paul has been expounding the great work of redemption and justification in the book of Romans, bringing us again and again to the cross and to the Saviour's feet. And if Jesus Christ, C.T. Studd said, be God and died for me, no sacrifice can be too great for me to make for him. And nothing God could ever ask us to do in light of the cross is unreasonable. Are you standing in the gap? Are you in the centre of God's will for your life? What a time God has given us to search our hearts, to consider our ways, and to set our houses and our hearts and our homes in order. May the Lord lead us into the centre of his will, and may someday we all stand at the judgment seat of Christ, knowing that we have sought to fulfil the will of God for our lives. God bless you all.